So here we are today, John. Steve Nash interviewing John Bergruen and Gretchen Bergruen. You established your gallery in obviously 1970. And well, that was, was two little levels, little interior staircases. Uh, it was pretty small, but it was actually uh, perfect for the scale of what I was doing, mostly prints, mm -hmm. and then doing exhibitions on two floors or maybe on one floor having in specific exhibition, Matisse prints, Giacometti prints, things like that. So then as you caught on, the gallery caught on, you began more and more showing paintings and sculpture along with the prints? Well, or? that took a while. I did have a good relationship, not only with my father, hopefully, but with Frank Pearls, who mm -hmm. had a gallery in LA that specialized in oh, prints, okay. so that he would consign things to me too. While I was at Pearls Gallery, I would sneak next door to the Dane Frames, Robert Dane Frames. He, though, was a strange man who was a very good framer, but he had an interest in Jasper John's prints. Mm. So that's where I first saw them. He was the ultimate hero to me in terms of his vision and his printmaking and his art in general. So when I got back to San Francisco, eventually I had an opportunity to meet Tanya Grossman, who was the founder and proprietor of Universal Limited Art Editions, which had published almost most of Jasper Johns's works and uh, Rauschenberg, mm -hmm. Frankenthaler, Motherwell. I became a subscriber to get every one of her prints because I had one customer, one customer, who wanted to get these prints, and it was Hunk Anderson. Mm, really? And these prints were amazing, so I got one of everything. I got two of everything, one for Hunk and one for me. Mm -hmm. And that lasted for a couple of years, but it also was most important as an introduction to the New York art scene in its own way. But then and you had some paintings I know by Rauschenberg, and you, had a, you did have a Calder show, a small Calder show. Yes. Many of these shows were basically prints with one or two paintings, or perhaps uh, a couple of paintings and a couple of drawings. But my entire business selling those works was through out-of-town clients. You know, we would get requests so that most of my business, for at least Jasper Johns and Rauschenberg, things like that, was from New York-based or Atlantic seaboard collectors. And were there, out of that whole uh, development, were there any particular shows that you felt were uh, extra important for you establishing your presence? Well, there was one show in particular that I was very proud of. It was an exhibition of this young artist from Los Santos. And he designed the card. And it was Edward, he, he spelled it out phonetically, Ruscha, I think his, his, it's spelled R-U-S-C-H-A, but a lot of people mispronounce it. So I think he did it out phonetically. And then underneath he said, young artist. <laughs> and that was our announcement. I mean, I was so happy to do this show and to work a little bit with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a, a sort of a leap of faith maybe on his part, but I had a good relationship with the New York art dealers like Leo Castelli. Mm -hmm. He would consign works to me and then of course, there were other mentors like uh, Sid Felsen, the founder of Gemini. Yeah. He introduced me to more artists mm -hmm. and more people who were working in L.A. At, at Gemini. And I remember meeting Frank Stella there. Mm. Whoa, Frank was different. And then Sid Felsen says, John, I know you like to play tennis. Mm. Would you mind playing with Frank Stella? Mm -hmm. I said, are you kidding? Why don't we meet 9 o'clock Tuesday morning at this public park which had nice tennis courts get there at nine o'clock. Frank Stella hadn't shaved for about three days. His hair was all wiry. He's missing one finger and two teeth. <laughs> Here's this guy who shows up with a tennis court. We get out there and I think he beat me six one six low. Oh my gosh. Oh, I've never been so shocked in my life. Okay, well here we are finally with Gretchen uh, as part of the conversation, which we're delighted to have you on board with us, Gretchen. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you became involved with the gallery. Well, the first week I was there, John announced that he'd be in New York and that there were uh, a number of Morris graves being delivered and that I should install the show. Oh, well. <laughs> it was a sink or swim. Baptism by fire. Yeah, and I said, well, I've never installed an exhibition before. And his answer was, well, I'm sure you'll do a fine job. Obviously, you've built some great friendships over the years. Uh, and so who among those artists you've still maintain these kinds of really tight relationships with? Well, well, we just, as I said, had dinner with Frank Stella, who I've known since the 70s. Mm -hmm. well, of course, Wayne Tebow. And we have relationships with a lot of artists in the past, like Tom Holland, Squeak Carnwath. 
Uh, and some that are no longer with us. Yes, of course. Nate like Paul, Oliveira, of Paul course, Warner, Paul Nate Warner, Oliveira, Elmer Bischoff, David Corn Bischoff. Yeah. One of the most memorable uh, relationships between uh, artists and ourselves, to me, has been Mark DeSuvro. Mm -hmm. That I've known Mark since before I really knew John. He just has to be one of the most wonderful people in the world to work with as a human mm -hmm. being, one, but as a brilliant sculptor, number two. And it's just been, you know, quite a quite an adventure with him through projects that worked, projects that didn't work. And yeah. well, I had a little piece of that relationship, you know, bringing the yes. great um, uh, Pat Mark DeSuvero up to the Legion of Honor in front of the right. Legion of Honor. Of course, right. through you. Yeah. Yeah. He, has so much of his heart and his roots in San Francisco that the piece at the uh, Legion and then finally the Chrissy Field show was a huge thing for him mm -hmm. because he feels it's coming home and where he first landed under the Golden Gate Bridge. So it's, you yeah. know. Is there some sense of, of loyalty to the Bay Area that uh, obligation, one might say, to help foster for us? Um, local we, talent? Yes. Regional talent? I, I think we have never been known for aggressively feeling that we have discovered somebody and will you know, promise them that out of San Francisco we could make a career for them because we're not a New York gallery. And I encouraged one of our preparators to say, you know, get out there and show me what studios we should be going to. Sure enough, he introduced me to Barry McGee, Margaret Kilgall, and mm -hmm. we wound up doing a Tom Sachs show at that time. It was mm -hmm. when we had the extra floor. We did many of their first exhibitions in a gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but going further afield, like Mark Tanzi was an artist that we showed because we had a great relationship with his dealer in New York. And it was just a, one of the great experiences in dealing with, a, at the time, a younger up-and-coming talent. He was young. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just, we were never considered to be avant-garde artists. Uh, we don't discover artists. We sort of finish them off. <laughs> 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 no, but we also brought exhibitions. I think we saw our role as one that was we could sell paintings without having so many exhibitions. But I do think that we are both committed for our own creative satisfaction. I remember bringing Kiki Smith's first show to San Francisco. I did two exhibitions with Lorna Simpson. We brought Elizabeth Murray. And Jennifer Elizabeth Bartlett. Mars case. Jennifer yeah. Bartlett. Mm -hmm. um, Joel Shapiro. Yeah. You know, Walton Ford was in a group show. I had Dora Salcedo in a group show before anyone in the Bay Area had ever heard of Dora Salcedo. Mm -hmm. And it was just a, a way of keeping ourselves interested selfishly, but also having fresh things to show newer collectors. You should know that there are many people that appreciate what the gallery has done for the local art scene. I mean, really. Thank you. Uh, now, looking over the list of exhibitions, speaking of that, it's astonishing. <laughs> I think I counted Remember we the, had... almost 500 exhibitions. We were a little um, <laughs> obsessed, I suppose. And the more of a variety we brought to town, the more we kept people guessing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, well, if we go in, will it be the same five artists they've always represented, or will there always be something you know, to surprise me. And to me, that was always a big part of having so many spaces in the building. I think things that jump out too, for me, as great moments was the, when we took over and opened the floors to have two floors interconnected, we did a Matisse um, drawing show. And the selection, the quality of the works in that show were just, it yeah. would be impossible to achieve now. And I feel the same way about a Ruscha drawing show we did in... Um, Not so long ago. The group of drawings were so fantastic quality. I tend to try to keep as many things when it's at all possible, or at least offer them first to people in this community. It's more fun that way. No, you know, absolutely. to know it won't just keep passing. Yeah, the museums are certainly very grateful for no, I know, that but... kind of behind the scenes help. <laughs> you know? So the Fine Arts Museums benefited tremendously from our relationship. So you yeah. mentioned the 70s de Kooning and talked about the de Suvero and the great Thibaut painting and the, one of the great jazz paintings, I think, uh, any player. Oh, that's right. You know? it's, uh, it, it's a pleasure doing that, you yeah. know. It's uh, something that everyone will see for, it won't be hidden. It won't be in, you know, a foreign country and never seen again in, in this area. So it's just, it's part uh, of the joy of doing it, really.